More than 3,000 years before the rise of Darth Vader, the galaxy far, far away was divided by a massive war between the Galactic Republic and a vast and powerful Sith Empire. Raging on for decades, this great galactic war only came to a halt when the Sith Lord Darth Malgus led a surprise attack on the Republic's capital world, Coruscant. His devastating attack forced the Republic to sign the Treaty of Coruscant, bringing about a period of uneasy peace between these rival factions. And that's where the storylines of Star Wars The Old Republic begin. In the following years, tensions between the Republic and Empire only grew. Despite the Treaty of Coruscant, both factions took every opportunity to undermine each other. The Empire annexed many defenseless worlds and encouraged others to openly reject their affiliation with the Republic, while the Republic resisted their ancient enemies' aggressions as best they could. Jedi and Sith, spies and soldiers, even hired guns, all played their parts in the escalating conflict. After 12 years of tenuous peace, all-out war resumed between the Republic and the Empire. When the Sith Emperor Vitiate was seemingly destroyed by a Jedi, many hoped it would bring a swift end to the hostilities for good. Instead, various splinter factions, hoping to fill the vacuum of power, multiplied the number of battlefronts. Darth Malgus, long dissatisfied with the political maneuvering and backstabbing of Imperial leadership, led one of these fractured groups in a revolt, hoping to seize control of the Sith Empire. Malgus and his followers were challenged by the Republic and the Empire both, and he was presumed dead when his stolen space station was destroyed. But the damage he inflicted left the Republic at a considerable advantage, signaling a shift in the renewed war. Shortly after the fall of Malgus, the new leader of the Hutt Cartel, Taboro, conquered the neutral planet Makeb as the first step in a bid to expand the power of the Huts across the galaxy. Makeb was home to a resource known as Isotope 5, a tremendously powerful energy source Taboro planned to use to overthrow the Republic and Empire both, establishing the Huts as the galaxy's largest superpower. But Taboro's conquest of Makeb came with a price. His ruthless Isotope 5 mining operations destabilized the planet and set it on a path to total destruction. The Republic raced to evacuate Makeb's citizens, while the Empire sent their own forces to salvage as much Isotope 5 as they could in the chaos. Eventually, the other Hutt Cartel leaders turned against Taboro and offered to assist the Republic with eliminating him. As Taboro's invasion came to an end, the Republic gained a powerful ally in the Hutt Cartel, but the Empire's newly acquired supply of Isotope 5 made up for the shortcomings they had recently suffered. The chaos of Makeb had barely subsided before a new threat emerged. Despite fighting on opposite sides, a Sith Lord named Lana Benico and a Republic spy, Theron Shan, both began to suspect that their superiors were working together for an unknown third party. By pooling their resources and recruiting the help of some powerful new friends, Lana and Theron uncovered a conspiracy that was bigger than they could have imagined. The Republic and the Empire had both been infiltrated by a veritable army of cultists, led by the infamous Jedi-turned-Sith known as Revan. Knowing that the Sith Emperor Vitiate was not truly dead, Revan and his followers attempted to force Vitiate back into a physical form they could destroy by fomenting catastrophic battles between the Republic and the Empire. However, once their plan was exposed by Theron and Lana, a coalition of forces from both factions defeated the cultist's plot. But the victory was short-lived. Vitiate's incorporeal form spoke once more after years of silence, empowered by the very attempt to destroy him. The Emperor had returned. Republic and Imperial forces joined together once again after the newly freed Sith Emperor consumed all life on the planet Zyost, killing almost the entirety of the planet's population. A task force led by Darth Mar, a key player during the Revanite Crisis, tracked the Emperor to an uncharted area beyond the known regions of the galaxy, known as Wild Space. Mar's forces had barely begun to explore the region before they were attacked. The assailants, led by Prince Arkin of the Internal Empire, captured Mar and one of his allies and brought them before his father, Emperor Valkorion. Mar immediately recognized Valkorion as the same emperor who had once ruled the Sith Empire and who had destroyed Zyost. Mar was killed in the ensuing confrontation. While Valkorion attempted to recruit Mar's ally to his cause, he was struck down and seemingly killed. Arkan blamed the ally, whom he called Outlander, for the attack and claimed the throne of the Eternal Empire for himself. The weakened Republic and Sith Empire were powerless against Emperor Arkan's forces and quickly submitted to invasion. Hope was lost until the Outlander escaped Arkan's prison and took command of the Alliance, an organization built from Republic and Imperial forces to shatter the Eternal Empire's grip on the galaxy. All the while, the disembodied Emperor, now known as Valkorion, lived on, speaking within the Alliance commander's mind, a 
attempting to guide their actions and tempt them with promises of his power and wisdom. The Alliance's rebellion was long and difficult. When Arkin was eventually deposed, his sister Valen, who many considered to be even more tyrannical, took the Eternal Throne for herself. Valen's rule, marked by bloodshed and chaos, ended when she attacked the Alliance base on Odessin. After a long battle that cost many lives, the Alliance commander defeated Valen, traveled to the Eternal Empire's homeworld of Zakul, and seized control of the Eternal Throne and what remained of the vast automated fleets it commanded. It was at this pivotal moment that the disembodied Valkorian struck, attempting to seize the commander's body for himself. But the commander's will was stronger than he'd imagined, and the once Emperor of the Sith was seemingly destroyed at last. The Alliance's impressive influence over the galaxy was short-lived. Without a common foe to unite them, tensions between the Republic and the Empire quickly escalated. Meanwhile, a shadowy group known as the Order of Zildrog managed to secretly infiltrate all of the Alliance's systems and communications, ultimately destroying the bulk of the Alliance fleet before they were stopped. With a return to war becoming inevitable, the commander was forced to choose a side for the battles to come. The first shot of this renewed conflict was fired on the planet Osis, where Imperial forces were deployed to destroy a hidden colony of Jedi in a preemptive strike. The mission was ultimately led by Darth Malgus, who had narrowly survived his brush with death, and now seemed fully, if suspiciously, loyal to the Empire's new ruler. Is the man who once challenged the Republic and his fellow Sith alike truly returning to the fold as a loyal warrior for the Empire? Or does Malgus still have his own dark agenda? Find out in Legacy of the Sith.